Welcome back, my darklings, lightlings, hybrids, and everyone in between. I'm doing so much better than I was the last time I saw you or you saw me. However that goes. Anyway, I'm better. We're doing good. <laughs> Thank you all for the wonderful positive vibes and uh, good feelings and positive energy you sent my way. Quite sure it helped. So I appreciate it. Anyway, we are going to continue with the 13 Nights of Samhain uh, tag that uh, was created by Starlight the Wild Witch. And again, thank you so much for creating this. I am having a lot of fun doing it. And again, everybody out there doing it. I see you and you. Yeah. Loving the videos. <laughs> loving the vibes. So due to work and just other things going on, I am going to go ahead and just kind of um, record it all today. We'll see if I chop it up into separate videos or just release it as one big one. Sorry I have to do it that way, but we're going to have to. All except for the question of um, like what traditions or rituals you do for Samhain because that one I thought about it and um, I may go ahead and make a little special reconsideration this year to record my dance with the dead ritual for you guys. Um, <laughs> It'll be the first time I'm actually sharing it, and I'm excited to. So I will skip that one until actual Samhain Eve. I know I'm breaking the rules here, but it'll be worth it. Okay? And also depending on my health, so we'll see. Okay? All right, guys. So with all that being said, let's get into it, shall we? So our first one, our sewing altar or our costume or decorations. I don't have my costume yet so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my altars. I have one for Hecate, one for the Desir, and one for the Aesir. But um, mostly for Samhain of course it is my Desir altar or ancestor altar. Here we have my Samhain altars. So that is my mother's ashes in the urn. I have my spirit board there and um, I have a little Hecate box that's um, got crystals and obsidian and other things in it. My moon water in the skull jar. My candle. Um, above that's my tarot but um, then here I've got my scrying mirror and the actual ancestral altar I built and um, I'm still building on it. In the little offering bowl are things that belonged to my ancestors and some crystals. I have my dad's ashes, things I got him for Father's Day, crystals, makeup from my mother's box, um, just various little trinkets and uh, photos of my grandmother, my mom and I, and the mirror I use for seances. This is where I leave the offerings for my ancestors at the ancestral tree. It's kind of like a natural formed cauldron or offering bowl. Though you can't see it as well because it has grown up quite a bit, I've got to actually take some of this out. But this, uh, I'm going to spend the next few days doing that, cleaning up around it, making sure it's kept up. I haven't been able to, but yep, this attaches to one of the roots and right up to my beautiful, sacred ancestor tree. Every one of my great ancestors before me, well not everyone, everyone that uh, took care of me and I grew up with um, that are past now have walked on these roots and I consecrated the land around this tree um, to harness their energy and I come out and talk to the tree and thank the spirit for being sacred and holding that energy for me and 
I like to celebrate the beautiful dryad within this tree. Um, I'm so grateful that it formed this little pact with me to be able to do this. And when I hug this tree, I absolutely still feel my ancestors. Its roots are strong and they spread around the entirety of our yard. Um, so yeah, it uh, it's a big tree and it's beautiful. <laughs> and it's right near my fire pit, so it's perfect. <laughs> I'll be decorating it with ribbon and a few other things, placing offerings and photos around it soon for Samhain. And uh, I'm going to also invite this dryad within the tree to dance with me at my Samhain ritual in Dance of the Dead. I cannot wait. And the next one, what spirits do you work with and how do you connect to them? A couple different spirits actually. Um, at times, I do like to work with the energy of what you would call the devil. Others call him the horned god. Others call him Lucifer, Loki. You know, there are many different faces to this type of energy. But I like to work with and honor that energy nonetheless. I like to kind of group it all into the symbol of the serpent and to me it is very witchy because that type of energy has been associated with witches in probably not so good a way for a very long time. But to take that and turn it into something empowering for witches really feels amazing and is important to me so especially around this type or this time of year, I like to work with that energy and honor that energy. To me, the energy of like the devil or, you know, Loki for me or whatever, would highly represent that rebellion against, you know, these uh, limiting beliefs or beliefs of modern day where it says that, uh, this is the only right belief or a belief used to control people or lie to people or just really tell people that they're crap. So I like to honor that one. Um, as mentioned before, I do like to honor the elves and that does fall under the Fey umbrella, but I like to honor the elves and uh, the nature spirits, especially the dryads. Um, I started decorating my ancestral tree yesterday. I will do that by taking the last dying flowers of the season and picking those and decorate the entire tree and with ribbon and other things and little trinkets I have to um, kind of offer it to the tree so that the death of the season um, can decorate it and kind of um, give it as an offering as that last life force to mean something. So it's like nature giving back to nature if, if that makes sense and in a way I'm nature, you're nature and it's like this exchange of energy. Anyway it makes sense in my head and it's really pretty. I like to honor the tree spirits, like dryads and other nature spirits, elementals, um, cryptids, or any other type of being out there to kind of welcome and honor them into our world or reality. Also, I mentioned before, ancestor spirits, you know? I also like to help anybody that I can connect with their ancestors or if somebody's having, you know, a lot of spiritual activity in the home, I can help with that. That's my way of connecting and kind of giving back. I also like to do seances. I love doing divination and I do many forms of divination and a lot of dream work this time of year. 
So I like to connect to them in my dreams and go on adventures with um, my dead ancestors or even deities. Pondering work where I use mirrors, I use obsidian balls, I use scrying um, with water, I use tarot, um, I use a spirit board, and I use myself. Also, I forgot to mention earlier, one way I like to honor that devil-like energy is for a sabbat using astral oil or witch flight oil to create my own astral sabbat and celebrate with that um, by taking some of the ways that uh, they said in some of them older horrible books like the Malleus Maleficarum that witches do, you know, they gather and have sex with the devil in the woods and all this nonsense. <laughs> I like to take that and actually create it in my Sabbath, but in my way and in a, a beautiful way to celebrate the energy and celebrate the Sabbath and honor that energy and empower it. The next one is how do you connect to the natural world around you? Future Courtney coming to past Courtney because my question of how I connect to the natural world around me apparently didn't record for some reason. So let's just make a long story short here because now I'm frustrated. So always I connect to my natural world by being in the moment, just trying to enjoy what's going on right now and around me, what I can be involved with spiritually because spirituality is natural to me. After all, we create our own realities, our own worlds, even though we do have the outside world going on collectively. I like to create mine and make it magical always. Share a Samhain craft, divination method, or spell. So, let's talk witch flight oil. The recipe for this is going to be hemlock, sweet flag, bat's blood, deadly nightshade, baby's fat, cowbane juice, soot, and oil. And if you really want to give it that pack of a punch, throw in the blood of a virgin. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's actually the recipe, like, in the old books for witch flight oils that witches apparently used and then masturbated with broomsticks that had psychedelics on it so they could go ride with the devil on Halloween night. Yeah. <laughs> I am here, luckily, to share my astral oil recipe with you. Right? You're welcome. You're so welcome. You don't need bat splatter, baby's fat, or broomsticks in that way. Moving on. So, the real recipe. I would like you guys to kind of develop your own incantation if you are going to make this. Because it's just that much more personal and more creative and more powerful. But... Um, the basic ingredients for my astral oil, I use blood moon water, base oil, some kefi, palo santo, frankincense, myrrh, cinnamon, and anise oil. And I, of course, consecrate it uh, with my intention. I use flame to amp up that, like, doorway um, between, like, the spiritual world and our world. And, um... Then I like to create and visualize my Sabbath and kind of hold that intention in the astral because everything we think about or create, you know, or visualize or think is in the astral first. Create your perfect Sabbath, where it's going to be, what you're going to do, what it's going to look like, who's there, you know, your perfect pagan celebration for Samhain. And that's going to be your destination. And you're going to use this oil, just a little dab right over your third eye. And 
induce your trance and meditation before bed and bam baby if you want to ride a broom there in the astral you can if you want to ride a dragon you can if you want to drive a hippopotamus you can it's the astral baby have fun share a favorite recipe for autumn so one of mine is pumpkin bread i absolutely freaking love pumpkin bread i could eat it every day every day and you must try it really if you haven't yet what are you doing with your life the next one is share a paranormal experience or encounter. I have to pick just one because honestly, I mean, I've seen the dead if you're talking ghosts since I was young, okay? But <laughs> if we're talking really creepy and one, I mean, I feel like I've shared a lot of them on here, like aliens, spirits, all kinds of stuff. But if we're talking recent and really creepy, like I'm hard to scare, guys. I'm hard to scare. I'll face demons. I will face whatever. You know, I love ghost hunting. I'll go to a cemetery alone at night. It's amazing. But this really got me, okay? Um, <laughs> it actually happened not that long ago. And if you even know what the hell this was, please leave me a comment. <laughs> so I'm walking behind my house in the wooded area. And it is the ass end of a national park. Well, it's getting dark. You know, it ain't like too dark to where you can't see yet, but it's starting to get there. And my one, my younger son ends up joining my boyfriend, Luke and I. We're almost done with our walk though. We're coming halfway back to the house, but it's still quite a good distance. Well, right by this giant tree, which is the halfway mark to my home from the woods, I call it the grandfather tree. But anyway, we're almost there. And from inside the woods, we hear my oldest son's voice screaming, help, help me. We all freeze a moment. Like, did we, did we just hear that? Again, we hear it. Help, help me help me, even said my younger son's name. But it also, something sounded off about it, but it sounded just like my son. I'm panicking. We're thinking, okay, coyotes chased him in the woods, or he was trying to get to us and something got him like a wild animal, like something happened. They know not to go deep into those woods without an adult or telling, you know, so we immediately, Luke pulls out his gun and he's aiming it at the ground, but he's yelling, Josh, I have my gun out. Please, you know, answer us. I'm screaming, Josh, answer us. I'm about to call for help now. If you're pranking me, you need to tell me now because I'm about to call for help. Well, we didn't get no answer. Now, at this point, Luke and I are in the woods searching, searching for things we knew he had with him or on him all day, not a trace, not a footprint, and the entire woods is eerily silent, which we all know means there's a predator close by, right? Well, I'm getting a horrible feeling. My younger son had already ran to the house to go see if Josh was there. He comes back when I am telling Luke, look, we need to go. We need to go call for help now. We're on our way to my house in a rush to go call for help. I am freaking panicking at this point. My son comes back to tell me, hey, mom, like, uh, uh, uh Josh, he's, he's, uh, not at the house. I don't know where he's at. So at this time, I'm really freaking out. I start screaming for him and I just say, fuck this. I'm going to go get people on the phone. We fixing to get this whole damn town looking because I'm going to find my boy. Well, I get home to see my son is actually 
coming out of my car, sometimes they'll hang out and they'll listen to music or whatever. And he's all like, hi, mom. Hey, Luke, you know, and now when I tell you there is no way he could have gotten at that distance without us seeing him, there's no way he could have done it or pranked us. It's a straight shot to my house and it's an open, clear area from that grandfather tree to my house. You can see everywhere. So I'm like, were you just there calling for help? You know, we explained him and he's looking at us mortified and freaked out. Like I was nowhere near there. Like this, that wasn't me, I swear. And I'm like, if you're pranking me, like you need tell me it's cool if it was you tell me he swore he's like mom it, it wasn't me me luke and my younger one just look at each other like what so we were thinking like we've heard legends of wendigos we've heard about mimics we've heard you know about all of these cryptids people have encountered now those i had never encountered before like that, where although out in those same woods, I have thought that a dog man was out there before, and I did think a skunk ape was once. And um, they still may be. What's interesting is there are many native burial grounds nearby. And um, I mean, it's got a lot of history, those lands, and a lot of it's dark history. So I mean, who knows what's out there? But that was one of the most recent ones, and that one terrified me. And what's weird is we go out into our yard at night, and we feel like we're being watched all the time. And the coyotes are really interesting out there. Ooh, speaking of coyotes, I got one more for you. Same house, same land. I'm walking my dog one day, and... At the grandfather tree, I swear it always happens in that area. And it's funny because Luke and I were talking about this story last night and he connected all of this. He was like, it always happens in that area. So I'm walking my dog, Floki, you all know him <laughs> anyway. And I see a huge, beautiful deer with these long antlers in the field. So you have like, okay grandfather tree field the trail I walk leads up like this into the woods and it starts where the grandfather tree is the deer's right here there's a gate right by the grandfather tree I'm coming up this way the path with my dog I'm seeing the beautiful deer here it's walking this way past the gate it disappears behind gate and tree. Comes out this side. It's a large coyote. No deer. And it's so large and colored white. It looked like a friggin' wolf. Sits right here. Just sits. So stunningly beautiful. Staring at me and my dog. I start slowly backing up back home. And I was like, I just saw that. Rural Alabama, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I will finish the last question and the ritual one um, on Samhain, and I'll upload them around then for you so you can see the Dance with the Dead ritual and um, so we can go over my New Year aspirations and um, I tell you a bit about what lessons I reap this year and experiences because there is a lot so that video might be pretty deep but um I loved doing this I had so much fun and I'm sorry I kind of went ahead and did it all but with my schedule and all it was kind of the best thing for me to do so thank you so so much at the Wild Witch and everybody else watching much love